the story about reptilians in Poland is something I've shared maybe two or three times ever. And in this video, I will speak on the event that took place with a member of an Earth reptilian group that's currently situated in Poland, region of Poland, southern region of Poland. So this particular group is located within the mid-tier of the Earth reptilian beings, 800 million population. And I talked about them before, and they are located here within the Earth's realm. Earth is a realm, it's a reality, it's a colony system, prison planet. And I've had the opportunities in the past, I've been very blessed and fortunate and honored, of course, to encounter different Earth reptilian beings from South Africa to Moscow, Istanbul, Canada, United States, and even in France. And in this Poland story, it's very close to my heart for a reason. It wasn't a random meeting. This entity, this being, belongs to my oversoul. So there's a wonderful thing to connect someone that I know who knows me, that we reincarnated back and forth together. And, and even with the story I've shared with the event that took place three or four years ago with the South African group, the three beings, they're not on the oversoul. So the Moscow story I've shared with an entity inside of the, the nuclear bunker called Bunker 703 belonging to a Stalin at the time of the Cold War. He didn't belong to my oversoul. So with this particular group, he did. And in relation to Earth reptilians, I've explained before many times, they're all very similar in appearance. They're all bipedal, just like us, and legs, arms, head, eyes, the whole thing. There's no wings or tails, and they don't crawl anywhere. They stand just like we do, absolutely. They're not some bats who fly around, and there are some tails like crocodiles and dinosaurs or anything like that. But in my perspective, I say there's no more than 20% difference amongst them all, all of them. All of the species within the one race, I would say about 20% differences and so forth. And they live within fourth density and the early stages of the fifth density here within the Earth's re Earth of reality, this realm we live in. And they have significantly evolved since back in those days when the, they went from second to third density and then they received draconian DNA. So putting aside all of the conspiracy theories about draconians or even Earth reptilians, Especially, I don't debate anyone with primitive mindsets from the religious groups or 5D, New Age cults, Unicorn and Rainbow, Love Light, and, and those kind of things, particularly because they have consciousness equivalent to a squirrel. But I assure everyone that I would always debate at all times and open conversations with my peers and those humans with proper open minds. And when it comes to Earth reptilians, they're extremely real. This isn't some myth. This isn't some conspiracy. They're very physical, just like we are. They're just bigger, thicker muscles. Six feet at minimum, but they're seven, known to be about seven, 7.2, 7 7.3 feet. They're quite real, very, very physical within the fourth density and early fifth density right here on Earth, below the surface, within the oceans, on mobile ships, within our mountains, such as Mount Adams, Mount Shasta. And their ships are very real, very local ships. So they're the local custodians, really and they absolutely hold 24-7 monitoring of Earth. From internet to TV, military, governments, banks, corporations, broadcasting signals, pings, telecommunications, radio, social media, everything. They know every single thing happening on Earth. Every video published, even this video, eventually they're gonna get a copy of, they know about it. It's just how it works. Welcome to the reality, and sort of burst your bubbles, but they have three tiers. Top range, mid range, low range, 800 million, just under population. The biggest tier is the mid range. 60% of them are within the mid range, the workers, the soldiers, the executors, the spy surveillance specialists, and one responsible to truly move all the things within their own reality, within their own race. And, and of course, sometimes they meet humans in person, nature, these kind of things, sometimes within the base, very, very rare to do external popping in your bedroom type of thing, but the contacts do happen. Majority of the contact is fourth density astral state, out of body and things of this sort, or using avatars. And one of the biggest misconceptions about Earth reptilians is that they're not real because if they were real, people say, well, why don't they just come up here in our roads and parks and go to the white lawn of the White House and all these all these things, why don't they cancel interest rates? Why don't they stop the wars and bring us Gesser and Nasser and Medbeds and the most, all these radical internet 5D terminologies. Well, first of all, it's extremely close-minded to say that with pure 
ridiculousness and amateurism, zero logic too. But okay, as I've said before, first and foremost, stop asking for demanding for any being to come here. We're too primitive for anyone to come here. And humans aren't ready for open contact, open disclosure. Stop with that addiction. Not gonna happen. Nor do these beings wanna be our bodyguards, parents, lawyers, advisors, boyfriends, girlfriends. Protection officers, close protection officers. No, they're not going to do that. They have their own race to work and live, in, live within. So the radical obsession that humans have about in the spiritual community say open contact. It's not going to happen. Stop listening to the fraudulent speakers and false prophets. No one's coming. No external saviors are coming. That entire terminology is a psyop. Not going to happen. No one is coming. This is your incarnation. Take care of the shit you got to take care of. Besides, there are strict rules of engagement. Rules of non-interference, standard human fear, standard fear embedded within the DNA, unconscious layers, subconscious layers, other layers that humans don't even know of, not to mention ancestral fear brought over through epigenetics or incarnation through incarnation. But this particular great experience for me personally was great, was wonderful to meet such a wonderful oversoul member was in 2122, because it happened in a series of events, in a series of reptilian connections. And this particular Poland event wasn't that I went there to visit a certain city due to sightseeing. It's not like that, I will explain. So this entity knew of my existing connections with the draconian beings. I've, at that time, had 36 connections from six different groups of the draconians. And they knew of my association with Theta Tauri. So what this entity saw was within certain astral states, parasitic, cowardly, reptilian beings who truly are known to manipulate humans and harass humans and hijack human dreams and insert avatars into their dream states, rape humans, steal genetic material from humans and so forth. So he looked at my involvement with the Draconian beings, he looked at my involvement with the Theta Tauri, one of the most highest ranking war races within our galaxy. Then he saw these parasites and he says, Anthony's consciousness every night in the astral and out of astral state, particularly when I was in fifth and sixth density, integrated for the draconian training that I was doing with them and the counterparts of their own hybrid races, he understood as being in Poland that I was preoccupied because I was constantly integrated within the same soul layers in the fifth and sixth density. So he looked at what I would perceive, what I would explain as a upcoming astral attack, aka an attempt of an abduction, astral abductions, interrogations, and rapes. This happens all the time. So as this event was about to take place, what ended up happening was that I had an encounter with this earth reptilian from Poland. This was out of body. This was fourth density, not using technology, not using internal or external. And, and also for the most confusing part for, for me that this event itself when I encountered this reptilian was something I already knew, something I already went through. So two times prior to this, I went through the same procedure with this being and I was absolutely shocked out of body because at the time as I'm processing, how do I know this entity? I know this entity, I know this room. It was metallic, it was an underground base. He had no tail, he had no wings, he had no horns, a strong masculine structure, same structure. He was at six, five, four, six, six foot five maybe. He knew me, I knew him, but I had no idea how. Same base, same tunnel, the, the smell of the mold in that tunnel, same setting. And at that time, at that moment when I perceived them, I had no idea how, but I remembered the metal structure, the concrete structure, the smell of that structure, even the sounds, because tunnels, metal tunnels, metal tunnels underground make certain noises. The smell of the moisture, the moisture itself, the sweat, on the skin that I perceived, I knew these surroundings. Same walls, floors, metal walls, everything. The whole, the entire thing repeated itself. So I just went along with the program. But what I noticed instantly within a few seconds or a minute is that the energy changed. I no longer was scared of this being. I no longer was petrified or anything. It was just almost one brother seeing a, your own brother come from a war after two years going to war and you're just excited with over amount of emotions and feelings 
to see your own brother come from a war. And I'm just using war as an example. And the same being I saw before. So now I'm in my mid-40s. And I remember at that time, I realized that I've seen him before. And before that, I've seen him again. He walks the same way. He has this very unique walk. He walked the same way. So I knew he was the same guy. His energy, I recognized immediately. This was not a shapeshifter. This wasn't anything of that sort. The solar plex, the heart chakra, immediately went on fire. Third eye went on fire. And the overwhelming sensation of almost seeing your own brother, your family member, came, came forward. It was at the forefront of my own consciousness. Fear wasn't. And as he got closer in places, his hands on me, I felt no fear, but almost a desire to say, I missed you. You're finally here. Who are you? Remind me. Why am I in the same place? Why are these ventilation systems that I'm not, that I have not seen in our own tunnels when I get in a car and do a road trip across Europe? I've never seen tunnels like this before. What is this? Remind me. And I kept, this was my, this was my focus. This is where I was projecting. And without me saying anything, he just downloaded this entire set of information. And the way this whole thing happened really is the very, when I first perceived him the first, second time, and now again, the third time, the same thing is I'm brought into the base and then a humanoid type of reptilian bipedal. He comes from a tunnel and he walks towards me. The steps, the, the claws, the, the, the nails, or the claws on his toes, you can hear them as they hit that metal shaft. They make that echo noise. And one of the most unique things about this time is I had a cousin older than me. He died in a war back home. He actually volunteered to go to like some other war and he was killed by a sniper. He was, he, he's no longer incarnated. He's, he's dead and his consciousness was there. So seeing him, in my peripheral, I got that to look at. I'm looking at him and I'm looking at this earth reptilian coming, extremely dominant energy and all of the emotional feelings about missing my cousin. And seeing him now again, realizing that's the same man I looked up to when I was a child. And I knew for sure that the sniper killed him. We were always told as kids, the sniper killed him and there's a grave site and everything. So I have this nostalgia, I have these emotions, I have this, so many desire to ask so many questions. Are you an avatar? Are you a projection? Are you AI? Are you real consciousness? It ended up that both me and him, so my consciousness, and my former cousin are both connected to this earth reptilian under the same oversoul. So within seconds, the earth reptilian comes from the fourth density state, fully manifested, head to toe, very, very big boy, very muscular boy, very, very mus mus muscular boy, very tall, very strong, very strong and so very, very firm in his sovereignty. And all three of us got along pretty great. We all chatted, but mainly it was my experience that mattered the most because of a message. And I remember he said something along the lines, here we are again. It felt extremely comfortable, loving in a way, without expression of love. Uh, I missed him without saying I miss you. It's the inner feelings, of course, the energy and the co-creation of the energy is really, that's what happens. It's like one very powerful mix. So he's projecting all these answers and we're exchanging a lot of different conversations and confirmations of some of the questions from the previous two meetings. One of the times we met was also on the same base, but I wasn't living in this house where I'm living now. I've been in this house for only three years. And then prior to that, I wasn't even in the former house. And I'm trying to utilize all these like silly stories. And, and he's explaining, and I'm, I'm explaining, all this happening very fast. And I'm feeling my human body in my home, my bed, going through a stress because this is a very stressful, intense energy that I'm dealing with in the fourth density. And he understood this being that we don't have a lot of time. He recognized and understood my existing connections with the Alpha Draconian beings. He understood it with the Theta Tauri beings. He looked at the badge signatures or aura, sig aura field signatures of all these races. And he says, listen, I understand your affiliations, but here's something coming up your way. So he was explaining me this warning, the warning from his perspective. Hence, this third meet was the actual reason that we even met not to pet me on my head, not to give me a life advice or lottery winning tickets. No, no, it's to warn me about something that was coming my way to in the fourth density state. Never happened, but it was prevented, but it was a fourth density, uh, almost a warning itself. And he received the permission from his own peers to come and tell me this warning because of our oversoul connection, but because they also saw 
that I already had an admiration and respect for a lot of European beings. So this Euro group, extremely close, very tight. They hold no secrets, no lies, and they do not interact too often with humans. So we eventually parted ways and said goodbye to each other in a telepathic way, really. And I returned to my dream state. So I was pulled out of that fourth density, boom, brought into the regular silly nonsense dream state that didn't make sense. Out of that, wake myself up, and I'm feeling this lot of solar, solar energy, solar plex energy. Heart chakra is going crazy, emotions, because I've just seen ran into my cousin, I ran into this entity on the oversoul. So it was, wonder, it was a wonderful feeling to see that. But I remember at, in bed, I was sitting up in my bed, it was dark, I live alone, and I was looking at dark, and I started talking to myself. I said, I can still smell this being. I can smell the base. My skin smells like the base, my hands, like I said, I was just there. And the way the manifestation of energy and the way that out-of-body experiences works with these beings is they utilize a lot of their own consciousness, powerful mental warfare, powerful mental flow that they have. They have full utilization of the reptilian brain, and we don't. So he was able to push, hit me, target me, pink me with the broadcasting pink signal and pull me back into his own energy field. So it was, it was a great thing to see his assistance and just the ability what they can do. But then for me, as so too, is experiencing astral state. I've done a video on astral adventures. I've done so many videos on these things and soul and, and the way the soul intervenes and the way soul interacts on our behalf and so forth. What ended up really happening was the learning experience for me. It was a warning about astral state attack. This is true, but it was a learning experience to understand this group from Poland. And this group, like I said, very confidential and private. They don't, they don't connect to a lot of humans unless they have genetic ties and so forth. They have strict rules of engagement on human contact, and I'm very fortunate that he's one of my oversoul counterparts, a being who has actually worked with me already now two times prior, so it was easy for him to get a permission to be able to contact a third density human in his, in his sleep state. It would have been harder to get a permission to bring me on one of the ships using a portal technology, which happens often, the easiest way to meet a human. So he's a counterpart of my own consciousness as we both are living, both are incarnated in a physical state, me within third, him within fourth, inside of this Earth's incarnation, this realm, this, this reality. And I was informed and right now as far as the Canadian time is concerned, so my own current Canadian, Canadian month and, and year at that time, that we foolishly go by because it's completely inaccurate as far as my time zone, his time zone, so his area when Technically, this being would rest like we go to sleep. So I got to really learn about his society. The true reasoning, I understood why he came. I understood about the permissions. I understood about the rules of engagement simply because I've dealt with Alpha Draconian beings now for three years. So I understand quite, quite clearly how their strict rules of engagements work and why there even is a rules of engagement where no one talks to humans unless it's necessary to talk to a human, or it's a DNA, so DNA ties, genetic ties. So, of course, I've expressed through channeling, through my own higher self, I have ability to speak to my higher self, and I said, I desire to meet this being again. But then again, I was countered with, well, not really, it's not that easy, because many things need to be taken into the account. Strict rules of regulations, because his higher ranks, so the higher ranks in his own group, need to vote on it and say, yes, you are allowed to do this or you're not allowed to do it. And there's no argument. It's a one vote that happens. But most extraterrestrial contact, by the way, it's just everyone knows, it goes through a voting process of the council of that race, unless it's some ridiculous illegal abduction. So I've already put in a formal request to encounter and meet this being neutral ground in Eastern Europe, non-Poland, somewhere else in 24. So we'll see how this works out and hopefully, hopefully it does. As far as was he malevolent, nope, full transparency, full transparency, full appreciation. It was never harmed in any way, shape, or form. So another reason why people shouldn't fear monger, come up with fear mongering campaigns against reptilians. They eat us and abduct us and all this shit. No, these are deceased humans, parasitic beings, those beings that pretend to be galactic federations. Yeah, those very same beings and also some AI. So, in my perspective, this experience taught me a few things. I got to see also a deceased human my own cousin. And like I said, I was a tiny little child when this grown man, this brave, brave man went into a war and, <laughs> and unfortunately died. So that was a great thing too, that he was able to do me that another favor, this reptilian, and bring me a deceased human, a man I looked up to as a child. So the list goes on of the advantages. 
But if I write a list of all of the disadvantages, there truly is no disadvantages of this particular encounter. Just like there was no disadvantages of the encounter when I encountered the Moscow Reptilian as well as the Istanbul, the South African group, even though they did abduct me, it was very peacefully. I was never harmed and they brought me, they brought me right back. So I don't personally see Earth Reptilians as my enemy. I don't personally agree with mindsets of humans that say reptilians are the evil, they are the bad guy, they're the demons and this and that. Most humans don't know shit between the difference of demon, evil, Lucifer, Satan, demonic. They're all misrepresenting these terms. What's unique about this particular story is there was a woman that emailed me less than two months ago, like September of 23, who's one of a very publicly known healers and channelers in the industry here and she was actually featured at LA Conscious Expo in 22. So she emailed me, she had a session with one of my great friends who's a trans channeler himself and in the session she's told that she has a very strong earth reptilian in Scandinavia. So as eventually she was investigating and started to channel with this entity, the entity tells her contact a human in Canada named Anthony. She knew of me already through a friend of mine. So she emails me and says, she goes, listen, here's my session with this guy. Can you verify, like, is this really an earth reptilian that's talking to me? Because Anthony, you have a reptilian connection. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. So I looked into it. And yeah, to my surprise, she was, in fact, she today still is right now at this moment talking to an earth reptilian being from the very same group that my friend is in Poland. It's just that, that my entity that I've connected to is in the Poland region her entity is just outside of the northern border of Poland. So he pretty much said to her through telepathy and through clear audience, because she's utilizing both, she's a pretty talented girl. He said, contact a human named Anthony in Canada, and he is connected and certified by the draconian beings. So either he'll teach you that way or any other way to connect to us better, stronger, deeper, more effective, efficient, without hijacking, without problems, without interruptions and so forth. So she did. So it was very interesting to see now, and this isn't the first time that this has happened, often this happens, is the counterpart of a human, whether it is reptilian or non-reptilian, will look at soul connections, will look at consciousnesses and scan them in a 300, 500, 1,000 kilometer mile area, or 10,000, and they're going to look at best possible candidates that you as a human can contact where this other channeler or healer or psychic can help you out. In this case, I was sourced out on behalf of this girl. And to this day, her and I talk, and I, I wish her all the best. And she'll be probably, again, at the LA Conscious Expo. I'll be there at the 2024 LA Conscious Expo with my own booth at 155, I believe the booth this is. And when it comes to, in conclusion, my own perspective on channeling, I teach one of the most rigorous and complex channeling courses that there are. They're two months long, not a two hour on a Saturday, not three, three hours on a Sunday. They're two months long. And it, it, one of the things that I concentrate on is soul integration. Uh, the neutralization, the grounding, all these things are important, of course, but it is soul integration. Most humans today, and here's a good test, most humans today, if you ask them, what's a soul, what's energy, what's consciousness, they would not be able to talk to you for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes about it. If you ask them, tell me 15, 20, 30, 50 different areas of the soul, they wouldn't be able to tell you about it because most humans aren't understanding the soul aspect that much. Everyone can say we have a soul, we understand that. Okay, we, 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 we get that, we breathe the air. Yes, we know that we breathe the air. They find me what soul and speak to me for an hour about it. So one of the things that I cover in my channeling course is just that, to understand lower fractal versus higher fractal and how channeling even works. So that way, a person is not hijacked, a person is not interfered with, a person is not abducted, and there's no parasitic attachments, GPS trackers, or any kind of implants that occur, particularly not avatar insertions. So, in conclusion, Earth reptilians are not our enemies. They're not my enemy. Earth reptilians are not our enemy. Reptilians, period, are not our enemy. Humans in this industry are extremely programmed and conditioned to always point a finger and say, it's the earth reptilian. It's the reptilian. I had a bad dream. It's the reptilian. Oh, I had an abduction. It's a re No, it's not. You don't know shit about the difference between a reptilian, a shape-shifting entity, a deceased human, an avatar insertion, AI projections, or standard projections of extraterrestrial, extraterrestrials, or extra-dimensionals, or interdimensionals just like manipulation of this reality we call this video game. 
They can stop the time, insert, do things, and leave that, and then continue with the time where the human consciousness would not even know someone just walked right into your living room. So most humans that are blaming reptilians should educate themselves first and foremost because humans are experts at pointing the finger. We're always pointing the finger. You're the bad guy, but we don't have the courage to judge ourselves. So it is not the earth reptilians that are our enemy. Humans are our worst enemy. Humans are worst enemy to themselves and to our uh, nature, to, I would say, our environment, to our animals. We're psychopaths. Humans are the aliens. So no wonder most races don't have respect for us. But definitely I can certify this and I say this with absolute logic and straight face and with full integrity and dignity. I say this very proudly. Humans that are desiring to make strong reptilian connections, draconian connections, there's a procedure about it. Particular things take place, particular introductions take place, qualifications need to be met, certain training and programming needs to occur. And then these connections do occur and they are absolutely not malevolent. They're very neutral in the energy orientation.